This spotlight on local talent features Frank L. Humphrey III, a dynamic singer that is a graduate of Douglas Anderson School of the Arts as well as Florida State College at Jacksonville. The Weekly Link Up co-host, Randall Keith, was able to sit down with him at a rehearsal for his upcoming farewell recital as he has been accepted into the prestigious Manhattan School of Music. Let's look in. Hey guys, welcome to our Spotlight on Local Talent segment. I'm Randall Keith and I'm here with the incredibly talented Mr. Frank L. Humphreys III. How's it going, Frank? It's going really good. All right, good, good. So, uh, our first question is, uh, how did you first get involved with singing? And at what point in your career did you decide that classical singing was going to be your focus? Well, at first I got involved with singing when I was two years old when I was standing up on the church pew. Wow. Okay. And um, my mom had to move us back to like the last rows of the church because she saw that I was being a distraction to my pastor. <laughs> so, uh, to answer the next part of the question, it was when I was in 11th grade, going into 12th grade, and um, I was presented with a competition, and um, at first I didn't want to do the competition, but uh, at that point it was a turning point for me to, to go into classical music. Gotcha, so you, you felt like just from that time that classical was just kind of beat out everything else, there was nothing? Well, no, it didn't, it didn't beat out everything else, it was just, um, I wanted to add that to my repertoire. Gotcha, okay, okay, so you, you dive into other, other I genres do. of music? I do. Gotcha. I do. Okay, okay, good stuff. Okay, so Jacksonville is not necessarily known as like the, the haven of talent. Um, do you feel like you are adequately, adequately prepared for uh, what's to come in your career here in Jacksonville? Oh uh, yeah, I was very much so prepared even from when I was in uh, elementary school, middle school, high school, and now coming here, uh, coming to Florida State College at South Campus training with Pamela Hilton, I felt like they, there were plenty of wonderful teachers and wonderful coaches that I've worked with during my stay here in Jacksonville. And um, a lot of them are, are known, but my teacher, Matt Morgan, who uh, debuted 2004-2005 at the uh, New York City Opera, you know, I train with him now and he's done things in Korea and things in, you know, all over the world. So this is who you're dealing with here in Jacksonville. It's just you have to do your research gotcha. and you have to find and you have to be willing to um, ask people. Yeah. And um, they'll give you constructive criticism. They'll give you great people to work with. So. Okay. All right. And do you ever feel like perhaps you're a little different because we don't know mainstream, we don't know a lot, a lot about African-American male uh, right. classical singers. So you ever feel like you're a little different, you're a little ostracized, or are you just, are you comfortable, just comfortable off the back with being a male classical singer? Well, I'm, com I'm comfortable being just a singer in general. Okay. I mean, that there were a lot of why are you doing this? Yeah. What, 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 what's going on yeah. you know, with this? But um, I just felt like being the, doing the classical genre of music, it really shouldn't have had any color on it to begin with. I mean, playing, being able to play any type of role that you want to. Um, Miss Leontine Price um, is one of the the greatest examples, and George Shirley, who's still living, they're both still living. Um, they both play some of the most amazing examples in my life to say, you know what, just because you're African American doesn't mean that you cannot play the role, this role or that role in a in an opera at the Metropolitan Opera or at the Paris Opera House. So I'm very fortunate that they paid the price for young African Americans, but not African Americans, but Caucasian Americans, Asians and blue, black, and green people <laughs> can, can go into these opera houses with great voices, with great gifts from God, and just sing until the yeah. glory of his name. So. I think that's incredible. I definitely think it's a, a message that everybody needs to hear because, you know, in today's time, we, we think that the whole, we're post-racial, but we hear so much about racial things going on and just having someone like yourself that is just bold enough to step in and say, hey, you know, I'll be that guy and I'll let you know that <laughs> color knows no barrier. So right. that's, that's definitely a great thing. I definitely commend you, so you on much. that. And the question that I wanted to ask since I found out about the interview okay. is you performed for First Lady Michelle Obama. I did. How, <laughs> first, how in the world did that happen? And two, how was that experience? Like, well, one of her friends came to a performance that I had in Orlando. Okay. And um, at the time, I was representing an organization, an ambassador for an organization by the name of the Negro Spiritual Scholarship Foundation. Okay. And it was um, my debut gala with. Um, one of my good friends, Whitley Lacey, who's now going off to college as well. Okay. And um, she came to the performance and she said, I want him. 
wow. and she didn't say what for, but she said, I just want him. So word got back to the White House that, you know, this, that third was going on in Jacksonville, Florida. And um, I got a call from my representatives at the time from the association. And um, they were like, you know, we're flying you first class and this and that and the third. <laughs> and when I woke up at five o'clock in the morning to get to a stage, a tech rehearsal at six o'clock, I saw this woman come across stage. And I was like, who is this woman? And, 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 and the band started playing her song. And, and it was Gloria Estefan. And at age 18, I was like, is this real? <laughs> and then I turned around to one of my friends who were there with me. And I said, well, um, let me see a program. So when I flipped open the, the playbill, it said, Gloria Estefan and Frank L. Humphrey will be headlining the show for this evening. So to headline a show um, for Mrs. Obama and, Ms. and meeting her, it was the, I, I, I'm still in awe of it, yes. but it went so fast, but I'm very appreciative that it boosted my career to the next level and how to treat my voice and how to treat myself in this career. Right. You know, a lot of people have the same goals to sing for kings and queens and to sing in front of presidents. But I just believe God knows who he wants and who he wants to put in place at that very moment. And at that very moment, it was a life-changing and a career-changing time for me because I didn't know what I wanted to do when I got into high school. But I know at that time, I was like, I'm singing for our first African-American woman of the United States. You know, then let me continue with this career because I like this path. Right, so right. that's how I am. How in the world do you stay humble with all of that? You were 18 performing for the First Lady. Oh, uh, my mom. Your mom, okay. Um, my, my parents, but my mom, she really keeps me humble. She, she tells me every day, and that's something that I will take with me everywhere I go, just to stay humble. Yeah. And just to remain humble wherever I go, and just to, and just to enjoy this ride, but also, um, to remain humble throughout the process. Awesome, yeah. that's great. You gotta, gotta love mom. Yeah. Mom is always the grounding for, yeah. for everybody. I know my mom is the same. Yeah. She, no matter what happens, she definitely keeps me grounded. Mm -hmm. um, so you're, you have your farewell recital coming up. Yes, um, I do. What can people expect to, to see at the recital? Oh, languages galore. German, <laughs> Italian, um, Latin, uh, music theater uh, pieces, and. Uh, have some really good stuff planned, so um, I'm definitely not going to give it away, but I am going to sing one piece for you all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, what is your ultimate career goal? My ultimate career goal is to be in every facet of, of entertainment. I'm talking about film, television, um, the Broadway stages, um, and also the operatic stages. Okay. I definitely don't want to pigeonhole myself just to do one thing because I may miss my blessing. And that's what I have to tell a lot of my friends, you know, just don't say you're going to do this one thing because your bread and your butter may not come from just that one thing. Right. So um, I plan to be in every facet of entertainment and, and um, so far it's going good. Yeah, it's yeah. Going it seems good, like so. you are definitely well on your way. Yeah. Um, as you, from you being a, a hometown hero mm -hmm. already okay. um, and then headed, making your way up to Manhattan, okay. um, what, what, what type of advice would you give uh, local artist, just a student, uh, or someone that's just in the local uh, performing arts community here that really wants to take their career to the next level. What type of advice would you have for them? Don't be lazy and work. You have to work. Things don't come to you. You have to get to that piano every day. I'm talking about sick, tired, frustrated. You know, there's things. Um, even in the rehearsal, you know, my, my rehearsal that's going on right now, there are things that I'm still working on day by day. There's still things that I want to do. You have to pay it for, you have to pay the price. You're talking about you want to do Broadway, you want to do, you want to do TV, you want to do film. Go to those classes, get an instructor, get a teacher. Don't get a coach, get a teacher, teacher. because a teacher will really help you. That, that teacher will cultivate you. I'm talking about from, from what you wear, on down to you know your repertoire, on down to when you go into this audition, this is the way you should be. You know, I've been blessed here in Jacksonville to have some of the most greatest teachers that have taught me just to be yourself. Yeah. Don't be anybody different, yeah. but don't be lazy. Remain humble, don't be lazy. You must work. Yeah. 
<laughs> you must you must continue to work and that is the reason why I believe God bless me with the opportunity to be going to Manhattan School of Music and to have a presidential scholarship because I wanted to work on my academics and I wanted to work on my gifts. And until people treat their gifts, at, until people treat their talent as gifts, they'll, they'll get it. They'll get it. Wow. Well, you definitely have inspired me. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank I definitely you so appreciate much. you for taking the time out to interview with us um, for your insight. You definitely seem like you are well on your way. Keep in contact with us here. Uh, okay. Let us know what we're doing and if we can ever spotlight you again, you just definitely let us know, okay? Alrighty. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Sure.